Welcome back friends. So far we have completed program versus process, how the OS executes the process, the process structure in details and the CPU scheduling algorithms. In this session I am going to cover the next topic under process management which is inter-process communication, synchronization and concurrency. This topic is important because in many operating systems two or more processes may want to communicate with each other with some channel or medium and while they are communicating with each other what problems they may face and how to solve these problems that we are going to discuss in this session. So let's get started with the inter-process communication. So IPC stands for inter-process communication means how a process sends or receives the data or share the data from other process. Talking about the intra-process communication, it is nothing but when two or more threads within a process want to share the data. I haven't talked about threads yet, I will cover in the upcoming sessions. So let's say two functions want to share some data. What in a, I'm talking about the same process. In a process, when two functions want to share some data, they can store the data in the global variables. User can define a global variable and one function can write to the global variable, which is accessible to other function as well. And that other function can read from that global variable. So with the use of global variable, a process can do the intra-process communication within multiple functions and within multiple threads. But here we are talking about the inter-process communication. How a process shares a data outside the scope of process. So when two process wants to share something, they have to store the data in some common place, isn't it? As of now, why, when I explain you the process structure, there are four sections created for a process. Code section, static data, dynamic data and runtime stack. If you haven't gone through that video, please uh, go through that video first and then continue this video. So when a process is declared, those four sections are initialized by the operating system and in those four sections either instructions or the data that is local variables and global variables are stored but when i want to say that a process wants to send a variables value for example int a is equal to 10 and some other process wants to access this value which is declared or allocated for the process one but Process 1 cannot tell the other process or OS cannot tell the other process that read the value from the other processes any section because the addresses assigned for one processes are not accessible to other processes. They are the private addresses for every process. That's why these four sections of the process I discussed earlier are the private to the process. So therefore when any process wants to send any data to other process, it has to store outside the scope of process and not within the scope of process. There are many uh, mediums where the process can share the data. The first one is called as shared memory. Shared memory is nothing but the memory allocated outside the scope of a process. So as I said, this particular memory that is called as a shared memory is not declared in the static data or heap or runtime stack as well. It is the memory by the uh, for the shared variable is allocated outside the scope of these sections of process. 
it is allocated somewhere in the uh, scope of operating system area and once a process declares or allocates the shared memory other process just have to know the address or identity of that shared memory and it can access the data from that address but yes other process needs to know the address at which or the identity provided by the operating system at which the first process has written the data there are many articles you will find on internet about the shared memory how you can declare the shared memory in c or c++ just uh, do some research on this shared memory another simple medium is and very widely used medium is file which is stored on secondary disk shared memory is stored on primary memory and which is volatile but here the file is stored on the secondary disk which is non volatile memory so i can say that one process writes to a secondary disk in terms of a file and once it completes the writing process writing task other process from the same machine or different machine can read from that file so in other words the two processes have communicated with each other by sending the data or by storing the data on the secondary disk the third mechanism can be a pipe pipe is similar to file but the difference is pipe is called as in memory file meaning is that all the concepts of the file are applied on some part of memory here i am talking about the ram actually volatile memory we know that file is stored on secondary disk which is non volatile even if power goes off the data remains there but the pipe which is also called as in memory virtual file the data is wiped out whenever the power goes off it's a volatile in c or c++ also you can define a pipe there are several concepts in the pipe such as uh, name the pipe you can as you can give the name to any pro, any file on the secondary disk similarly you can give the name to a memory location which is called as pipe in the memory and other process just have to know the name of that pipe and it can access the data or write the data to it one of the property of the file is it is one way communication the fourth and very popular medium of communicate communication is the database almost every application uh, nowadays uses the database to store the data where many processes access the same data for example i say two processes i take which are running on two different machine and these processes are doing some database operations for example one process is writing to the data and other process is reading from the same database the same data item let's say a bank account if two people are say, uh, you know depositing um, uh, the, some a uh, money to the same bank account then one one process on some one machine can write to uh, the database and other process can uh, from other machine can also write to the same database but the database is a common place and the third process somewhere else can read the bank balance also so that's how i can say database is another channel of or the medium of communication between the processes so when two or more processes communicate with each other they have to be in synchronization let's say you talk over phone phone uh, with your friend but you make sure that at one time only one person talks even when you do some group uh, chat uh, group video calling no matter how many people are there in the ch uh, group chat you always make sure that out of n persons involved in the group chat only one person talk at a time 
so that's how i can say that those people are understanding each other they are in sync with each other and understanding the and and doing the communication with each other what if there is no synchronization mechanism that you apply another example i can give when you go to any ticket window many people come there and there is a synchronization between those people there how they form a queue to get the ticket one by one and that's how formation of the queue at the ticket window i can say it is the method of synchronization among multiple processes trying to access a same resource that is ticket window if you don't have the synchronization mechanism you may face the data inconsistency the data loss the data may be completely lo uh, lost from the system or the deadlock may also happen among the processes to give another example let's say you are uh, driving and you come across some square now at that square there is no signaling system installed now sometime it happen that the traffic jam happens at that square sometimes it doesn't happen you just pass through the uh, square and there is no traffic jam there but sometimes once in a while you stuck in a traffic jam at the square means if the signaling system is off means the vehicle involved which are going to share the same circle there are not in synchronization they don't know where to stop uh, when to stop and when to go ahead that's why if the signaling system is off there is a chance of deadlock among those vehicles here also in computer uh, systems when two or more processes don't know don't understand each other that a hey, uh, process one is going to take the resource one process two also requires a resource one now it may happen sometime that deadlock may appear and the some of the processes involved in taking some common resources will suffer from deadlock scenario they will wait for infinite amount of time we will learn more concepts in the deadlock in the separate chapter let me explain the producer consumer problem which is one of the very uh, popular and classical problem to understand the communication and synchronization between the two processes before i write the pseudo code for this producer consumer problem let me explain it with the help of some analogy so here let's assume that there is a producer uh, there is a uh, assume that there is a small food cafe in which uh, the chef is producing some food items let's consider cupcakes and the consumer comes to the cafe and wants to consume the data items here the cup cakes one by one let's assume that now here i have taken the common container in which produce whenever producer will produce one item one cup cake it will put in the container whenever it will produce the second cup cake it will put in the container itself and so on till the container become full and whenever the consumer arrives this consumer will take one cup cake from this container and then start it so here i have taken the common container which whose capacity is seven slots so i have given them the slot numbers starting with 0 to 6 so there are seven maximum cup cakes the producer can produce and keep it there now it's a simple understanding that let's say the cafe has just now open and the consumer arrives first the chef has not started the production of any cupcake yet now when the first customer arrives and there is no item in the container yet the container is empty obviously the consumer will start waiting similarly when let's assume the other scenario that the shop keeper opens the shop and uh, the chef starts producing the cupcakes 
and no consumer has arrived. Now, this producer keeps on producing the cupcakes till this container becomes full. The moment this container becomes full, the producer will start waiting. So, the producer waits on some condition and the consumer waits on some condition. To implement this, let me take a counter. Let's assume that there is a display, the uh, electronic display there in the shop, which indicates the number of items available in the container, initialized with zero. So there is no item there, and let's now start the production of one item now. So let's say producer produces one item here, and since it has put in the container, I am incrementing the count by 1. The producer produces the second item. Again, the counter is incremented to 2. Producer produces the third item. Counter is 3. Again, the fourth item. Counter is 4. And the fifth item, let's say, which is placed at the next slot in the container. And the counter value is 5 as of now. Let's consider, consider that the producer is now producing the next item. It is in the process of producing the next item. And meanwhile, the consumer arrives now. Now, when the consumer arrives, it is going to take one item, one cupcake from the container. And obviously, it has to decrement the count by one. So, now four will indicate there are four items in this, uh, this buffer. Again, the consumer wants to eat the second cupcake again it takes from the next slot from the container and the count value is again decremented by one meanwhile let's assume that the producer has produced the next data item now it will keep in the container and the value of counter again is increased to four so as of now four cup cupcakes in the container again one more item is produced and the counter is five now here the pr producer came to know that uh, the last item has put in the last slot but as of now there are only 5 uh, items in the container and still producer can put the 2 items. Looking at the count it comes to know 5 items are there. Now it will reset its uh, slot number again and it can put the next item in the slot 0 and increment the count to 6. Again one more time, the producer produces item and the counter becomes 7. At this moment, the producer will start waiting. Because the container is full, the counter's value has reached to maximum value. And now again the consumer can start eating and uh, decrement the counter as well. And this process may, uh, you know, uh, uh, may be continuously running and producer and consumer do their work concurrently. And while doing their work, they are using the common resource. So what are the common resources here? One is the display, that is the counter, which is incremented by the producer and decremented by the consumer. And similarly, the container, it is used to place the item by the producer and it is used to consume the item by the consumer. Let's write the pseudo code for this producer consumer problem. Let's assume there is some random number generation algorithm. The producer will produce the random numbers. You know that in the network security, a lot of uh, random numbers are required. So let, let's just assume a case here. Producer will produce, keep on producing the random numbers and consumer will keep on consuming the numbers one by one. So to, to store these items, I'll call it as items. Let me take a buffer of size n. Let me define n in the as a hash defined. So n's value is 100. So here I have taken the integer buffer of size n which is 100. So obviously there are 100 slots in this buffer. We call it as an index. 
when when it comes to the array it is nothing but the index of the uh, one item from the uh, array and the index varies from 0 to n minus 1 so if it is 100 the index is 0 to 99 here and in this buffer uh, with the initial value of count i have taken as 0 the producer will keep on producing and putting the numbers there so here is the code of the pseudo code of the producer i'll explain this code here i have taken one local variable that is integer p in which producer will produce one random number starting with the index from 0 okay so here is the while one loop indicates that while one indicates that it is an infinite loop all right so let's see how this producer program works here so first of all produce item let's assume that there is some another function i have written uh, which produces the random number and gives back in the my variable item p so i have get i have produced the producer has produced the item in the item p variable and now it has to put in the buffer but remember as per analogy we have to first check whether this buffer is full or not isn't it if the buffer is full the producer won't be able to put the item even if it has produced so the next statement is wait statement wait so let's check if the buffer is full or not if the buffer is full then producer has to wait so i have written while count has reached to n so current value is 0 and n's value is 100 so 0 equal to equal to 100 the answer is no and that's how the while loop will break here and the control will come down isn't it now if you observe i have put a semicolon in front of this while loop when you put the semicolon in front of this while loop this while loop statement is called as busy waiting statement means till this condition become false this will keep on checking this condition as long it as long as it is true so as of now counts value is 0 so 0 not equal to 100 and the condition is false here so if it is false this while loop will break and the control will come below let's go ahead so buffer at this index of in is initialized to 0 so buffer in i am going to put the first item so here the first item will be kept and producer will increment the uh, index now uh, in is equal to in plus 1 mod n so here mod n is required so uh, because when the producer will reach to the last index it has to reset the index to the 0 Remember in the earlier cupcake analogy also the producer has reached to the end and again it started putting the items from index 0. So here also uh, in is equal to in plus 1 and in plus 1 uh, mod n indicates it will be reset to 0 once it is reached to 99. And the last uh, statement I have written is count. Count is equal to count plus 1. So just increment the value by 1 here. So this is the end of the while loop here. Again, let's go back and produce the next item. So produce item, item P, next item has produced. While now the current value is 1 because it has already put one item. 1 is equal to is equal to 100. No. Condition is false. Again, put the item at the slot 1 now. Increment the in point in the value and increment the count. Again, one more time produce the third item put in the buffer fourth item put it put in the buffer and so on so that's how producer can put the hundred items and on the production of hundred items this count will become hundred isn't it the moment it becomes hundred assume that the consumer has not arrived yet. as of now the counter has become uh, reached to hundred let's produce the item one more time so the hundred and one item is produced now here this while statement counts value is 100 100 is equal to is equal to 100 the condition is true here 
and that's why the this while loop will again check this condition 100 is equal to is equal to 100 yes again check 100 is equal to is equal to 100 yes again check so till this condition remains true it will keep on checking this condition control will never come below till this condition remains true now let's move to the consumer here is the code of consumer in the consumer similarly i have taken the uh, local variable item c in which it will take the item from buffer in its local variable and out is the index from which it will take the item from buffer initialize with zero here is also a while one that is infinite loop i have written so let's assume that consumer is consuming the items from buffer in an infinite sequence. So here the first condition is count is equal to is equal to zero. Let's assume that the consumer comes first. The initial value of count will be zero. Now if count is equal to zero is equal to is equal to zero, yes, means there are no items produced and it has to wait. So that's how this condition will remain true till the count value remains zero. The moment produ producer produces one item and counter will incremented from zero to some value. So it will become one is equal to is equal to zero. No, the condition is false and it will go ahead. Take the item from buffer from the slot number zero in the local variable that is item C. Increment the slot number out is equal to out plus one model again here. Consumer as the consumer will uh, reach to the end by consuming one by one items It has to again consume the item from the start because producer has also produced the next items uh, From the zero if it reaches to the end and that's how again I have put here the out plus one model resetting the out value to zero Decrement the count here so if I assume that currently there are five uh, items in the buffer and uh, I am going to take one item from the buffer here. So count will become four and finally consume the item and this process will keep on repeating till the buffer will become empty. In other words, the counter value will reach to zero. The moment counter value reach to zero, this consumer will again wait at this busy waiting statement which is y. Before I discuss the problem in the producer consumer problem, let me tell you that any process may get preempted after the execution of current instruction of the scheduled process. So the assumption we have to make is whenever a user process is scheduled to CPU after execution of few instructions, few instructions may be one instruction or two instruction or hundred instructions. At any point, the user process which is scheduled may get preempted by the operating system. With that understanding, let's analyze the pseudo code that we have discussed for a producer and consumer problem. Assuming that both the processes are running concurrently. Here are the producer and consumer problems, pseudo code and the statement in the producer I have, I have shown is count is equal to count plus one and here the count is equal to count minus one. Let me assume that the current value of count is five. Now here with this current value, if producer executes this one statement, it is going to be six. And if consumer executes this statement, the counts value is going to be five again, because it will decrement from six to five. So you, you, you can also consider that this is my current bank balance and one transaction or one process is depositing one and other process or transaction is withdrawing one from the bank balance. So after depositing one and after uh, withdrawing one, 
the bank balance should be same as it was earlier that is phi here right so with this figure uh, so with this count value let's analyze the producer consumer code now if they run concurrently i have already explained you that this is a higher level language code when i introduce you to the operating system and how the program is executed by us so first this higher level a statement is converted into the assembly instructions when the programmer compiles it similarly the assembly instructions for this statement is load the value of count in register r1 decrement the value by 1 and then store again the value at the address of count now cpu is going to execute the corresponding binary instructions of these assembly instructions as of now just for understanding purpose i'll execute this at the assembly instruction level so let's execute this six assembly instructions in some sequence let me start with the first instruction of producer so load the value of count in register r1 so it will load the current value which is 5 in its register let's assume that the process is preempted here and the consumer process is scheduled here also load the value of count which is 5 in its own register both the registers are different here every process has its own set of registers so it has also loaded the 5 value let's preempt the consumer one more time and give the chance to producer producer will increment the register value from 5 to 6 here i am not modifying the value of count this process is just modifying the value of register so it will become 6 here let's preempt the process producer and schedule the process consumer here it will decrement its register value to 4 because it has already loaded 5 value earlier so at this moment in the producer's register the value is 6 and the consumer's register r1 has the value 4 let's preempt the process consumer and give the uh, and schedule the process producer here the statement is store which is going to write the value at the address of count so the current value of r1 is 6 in producer's register so it will write its value at the address of count and preempt this process and give the chance to consumer which is the last statement so here the register value is 4 which is going to override the value of count which is 6 so finally at the end of execution of these six instructions i am getting the value as 4 now now do you think that this value is correct no it is not correct why as i said earlier also one time count plus plus and one time count minus minus should retain the value of count as it is but i am getting some different value here i can say that this value is inconsistent or incorrect value the expected value is 5 only let me execute this six instruction in some different sequence now taking the initial value as 5 let's start with the consumer first now so let's assume that the consumer is scheduled first and it loads the value 5 in the register r1 let's preempt the consumer and give the chance to producer it will also load the register 5 uh, in its own register and let's assume it is preempted here it will decrement the value to 4 and let's preempt the process again the producer will increment the value to 6 in its own register and preempt the producer go back to consumer here it will store the value 4 at the address of count so the count value has become 4 now and here the consumer has completed its this statement and let's get get back to the producer and producer will store the value 6 which is in its register right so and it will override the value 4 making it 6 
Now again with this sequence, the sequence I have shown below, with this sequence, do you think that this final value is correct? One more time, I can say that this value is incorrect. So with the earlier sequence, I got the final value as 4. In this sequence of execution, I got the different value which is 6, which is also the incorrect value. The correct value would have been 5 only. So here also this sequence is incorrect from the logical perspective. Let's execute this instruction one more time, third time in some other sequence now. In this sequence, I am going to follow the sequential manner. Means I am going to first execute the consumer and then I am going to execute the producer. So let's execute the consumer first. Load the value of count in the register R1. So it has loaded the value 5. It will decrement the value of register to 4 and it will store the value at the address of count. So this is my execution sequence C1, C2 and C3 statements. So with these three statements, the value of count will become 4. Now consumer statement is completed. Let's schedule the process producer now. So the first statement of producer load the value of count in the register R1. Now here the point to note is what value it will load is 4. In earlier sequences that I discussed, both the processes had loaded the value 5. But in this particular sequence, after the consumer has written the value of count, then the producer is going to load the value of count. So here the 4 value is loaded in register R1. The next statement or instruction is increment the R1. So 4 will be incremented to 5 and write the value of register which is 5 at the address of count. So the final value I am getting here is 5 only, which is the correct value. There may be lot of other sequence of execution also. So I can say that I will execute first two statements of producer and then first two statements of consumer followed by the third statement of producer and then the last statement of the consumer. I can also do that. There can be many execution sequences that may give you different values as an outcome. So out of these three sequences that we discussed, the first sequence gives me the outcome as 4 which is wrong. The second sequence gives me the output as 6 which is also wrong. The third sequence which is a sequential execution of consumer and producer gives me the correct value which is 5 here. There can be many, many more sequences as I said. The above problem of getting the different outcomes if I change the sequence of execution is known as race condition. Let me again tell you, race condition is nothing but the behavior of the program which produces different outcomes if the sequence of execution of instruction changes. So what is the ideal case then? Ideal case is no matter what is the sequence of execution of instructions, the final value or the final outcome must be same in all the sequence of executions. But here I am getting different sequences. So I can say that the producer consumer problem that I have discussed suffers from race condition problem. And that's how we reached to the end of this topic, producer-consumer problem. I hope the explanation was useful to you. And you dis we discuss here how the if multiple processes tries to access the same variable, the same resource, how they end up in getting the incorrect values. And in ideal case, we don't want this incorrect values. So to solve these problems of race condition, data inconsistency, data loss, and deadlocks, we are going to discuss the synchronization mechanisms in the next sessions. Thank you for attending this video. See you next time.